both candidates setting their sights on key battleground states. Forecasters are now adding North Carolina to that list. It's a state that really assumed Trump would be winning just one month ago. So, Terry, should the Trump campaign be concerned? I think they should be. The honeymoon should have lasted a couple of weeks, and now we're looking at it being in its second month. Um, the convention last week seemed to rattle Donald Trump pretty bad and got him off message. Um, he wasn't quite himself. Um, he's talking in negative terms about uh, what to do with his staff. So we're at a dark time in the Trump campaign. I think the consensus has been that if he talks about the issues, this is a center-right country, and he has the um, issues on his side with most Americans when you talk about the energy issue or taxes or regulation. Those are things that people can sink their teeth into where he has an advantage. And I think it's time for a reset for Donald Trump so that he can get back on track in time for the early voting to take place. Yeah, well, that was big news out of my home state, North Carolina, the Tar Heel state, that it was switched from the category of leans red to, to toss up. Polling yeah, shows- Yeah, but there's not a whole lot of undecideds left in this race. Uh, the, Kennedy, uh, the Kennedy endorsement on Friday sort of settled the issue about where his voters are gonna go. It's gonna help Trump a little bit, but places like North Carolina are gonna be very close. We're in for a very close election. Yeah, well, polling shows that VP Harris is leading Trump in at least four key swing states and narrowing the gap in others. Michelle, how does Harris keep this momentum up, and does RFK um, endorsing Trump make much of a difference? Sure. The latest data I saw actually has Harris leading in five of the swing states, um, and she's about neck and neck tied in North Carolina, as you mentioned. And the only slight lead that Trump seems to have right now is in Georgia, which, as we know, uh, Vice President Harris will be spending uh, the bulk of her time this coming week in the state of Georgia. Um, so I think that she just has to continue to do what she's been doing. When you look at numbers, no matter how much the Trump campaign tries to say that uh, Harris is uns unsuccessful and she's easier to beat, the numbers don't lie. When you talk about $82 million being raised essentially on Thursday evening after Harris uh, completed her DNC speech, and then there being hundreds of thousands of volunteers uh, showing up, um, a third of the donors being new donors, so th which means that she's broadening her base, garnering additional uh, support for her campaign and candidacy, that the numbers don't lie. And so she has to continue to uh, speak to the people, reach everyday people. She'll be in Savannah, uh, Georgia, uh, on Thursday, as you mentioned. She has to continue to show how her campaign will make the, the lives of, of everyday people easier. She's, she has to continue to draw the connection between, you know, a vote for her is a vote for economic stability. It's a vote for job creation. It's a vote for um, um, building the infrastructure in agricultural communities. It's a vote for um, increasing housing affordability. Yes medical care portability. So she has to continue what she's doing. And um, the, the Kennedy endorsement, quite frankly, won't make much of a difference, as Harris has already mentioned in her campaign. Okay, you don't think it'll make much of a difference. The economy is one of the top issues. Every time I talk to a voter who plans on going out to the polls in November, they say, look, inflation and increasing costs remain one of their top issues. Terry, how does the former president, how does Trump convince voters that he has stronger economic policies? And how does he tie the pain that voters experience at the gas pump and at the grocery store when they go out to eat? How does he continue to tie all of that pain to Kamala Harris? Well, they've got to do a better job of staying on message. And when um, the president uh, does make news, it's usually because he's off message. I think one of the things it's, it's important to, to point out is that um, Trump has a lot of baggage, um, and it's going to prevent him from really growing out of about a 45 or a 46 percent uh, window of support in most of these states. It's only going to be at the end where whoever has the momentum at the end can kind of push it over the edge. But I do think this Trump campaign needs a reset or they're in trouble. There you go. Well, there there could be a reset on September 10th. That first. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your screen. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.